All right, Paul, so <coughs> have you ever heard of the whole creating your porno name, taking your first pet's name and the street that you grew up on? Um, I, I did not. All right, so well, mine would be Binks Oakliff. So I'm sorry, what was that? Jar Jar Binks, what is it? Binks Oakliff. Binks right. Oakliff. Yes, I know. All it right. kind of makes you a little wet. And right, right, yeah. So for you, what was your um, first pet's name? Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. So that's a good start already. And then yeah. the street you grew up in. Uh, fuck me, Daddy Lane. Of Potty Mouth, the only show where having your mind and gutter ain't all that bad. I'm your host, Erica Cho, and I'm here with the one and only Paul Iacona, the star of MTV's The Hard Times of RJ Burger. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us. Well, when you offered to meet me at home, you know, I just I couldn't refuse. <laughs> I like this. This is your second home here, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> no, I usually just crash on this couch, wake up, start it all over again, you know. So your character, you play the main character, R.J. Berger, in A Hard Times of R.J. Berger. Now, he's kind of like the misfit, you know, nerdy type, but we find out in the first episode of first season when the shorts drop that he's actually King Dingling. Now, what were you thinking when you heard about this, you know, the show and this role? Um, I was thinking, uh, I was, I, I read the script and I was like, this is very funny. I mean, I was excited. Um, and you know, who would have ever thought that it you know, would turn out to be what it has. Did your dick have to audition? Oh, it was stunt casting. That's all I had. To, I just had to go in, drop trow. How did your friends and family feel? What did they have to say about it? You know, they were, my dad likes to take credit you know, for most of it. And uh, my mom does too, which is really awkward. And <laughs> you know, and then, you know, no, you know they, I guess I've, I've I've been a part of some wacky things before, mm -hmm. but I mean this this one's this one's pretty cool. This one's this is a uh, not not a bad gig, not a bad gig to have for sure. So in terms of uh, physical likeness to RG Burger, how are you uh, similar below the belt? Oh man, we have a lot of the same shoes, because um, <laughs> I we have a similar we have a similar fashion taste. Maybe you can help us with this debate. All right. Some people say that it's more important for the guy to have the good equipment, and some people would say, hey, it's how you use equipment. So what's, what's more essential, like a, a beer can double fister or the motion of the ocean? You know, I think, uh, I think that the answer to this, to this question is also the statement of the show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in the bigger picture. It's, and, it's, and it's not, you know, it's not the size of the boat. It is the motion in the ocean. It is what you make of it, you know, of your life, of your, you know, of your thing, you know, whatever your thing is, you know, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your little quirky, uh, cool thing is that's yours, you know, own it and and it's it's how you use that. What was your favorite thing about playing RJ? Um, RJ is a very docile character mm -hmm. and um, and sort of a bit of a Debbie Downer, mm -hmm. and I'm quite the opposite. I'm an extrovert and over the top, so. For me, it, it really is sort of fun to escape into, into into this guy's skin and to take on this character and and in a sense to be the hero in in high school that I always wished that I could have been. You know, I, I sort of get to experience a, you know, this wonderful underdog story mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, it feels like I'm back in high school all over again. Not that not that it was that long ago, but it's a very cool experience. So it sounds like you kind of admire him. I, I look up to RJ. He's got bigger morals than I ever will. What do you think is RJ's favorite sexual position? Oh, he likes the uh, Swanson Swan song. What is that? Oh, I could show you, but I don't think. You can't disguise no, it. I didn't. Best to show in a bedroom? I didn't shave today, so <laughs> it's, it's a long story. What about if you could create a sexual position and name it? If I could create a sexual position, it would be. It would be, um, be called the ATM. <laughs> <laughs> the ATM? Yeah, ass to mouth, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All My mama told me when I was young, everyone's a superstar. Roll my hair and put my lipstick on In the glass of her boudoir There's nothing 
nothing wrong with loving who you are, she said, because he made you perfect, babe. So hold your beak up, girl, and you'll go far. Listen to me when I say, I'm beautiful in my way, because I'm a mama of a play. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born on the way. Don't hide yourself with regret. Just love yourself and you said, I'm on the right track. the favorite part of working on your show? Um, my favorite part of working on The Hard Times of R.J. Berger would be um, the collaborative effort between cast and creators um, on every level. Um, you know, we have a terrific, you know, principal cast, you know, and supporting, and, um, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it, it's a lot of good people with a lot of unique talent, and everyone sort of, you know, adds their own piece to the puzzle, and it's just, it, it comes out really special. That's awesome. So you guys get to put in a little input for what goes on in the show. Absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. Lots of input. What are your favorite things to do in New York and L.A.? Um, my favorite things to do in New York um, are, you know, going to the theater or, you know, uh, you know, taking advantage of the city and, you know, all the wonderful things that are here and, you know, some that are even free, you know, going to the mm -hmm. museum or something. L.A. kind of sucks, but, you know, you deal with it, you make the best of it, you find some good people, you know, mm -hmm. and you just... You work from there. So you're not like into the whole like going to the beach in LA and hanging out? I mean I'm pretty pale and stuff <laughs> so like that's you know beach has never like, been. Watch I'm out. more of a pool guy mm -hmm. you know the daiquiri and like a cool hat you know. Nice. All right so when you were growing up what did you exactly want to do? I mean I guess I always knew I wanted to be you know an actor. I think you know oh. you know I wanted to be a storyteller. Um, which, you know, I think what acting and, and then um, writing, which is my other passion, I think it's all just, you know, storytelling. And uh, I think I've always sort of had a, you know, creative fire under my, under my butt. And it's just something that's, that's always been, you know, passionate to me. Yeah. All right, so if you weren't acting and you're like, you know, you're experiencing a lot of success right now. If you were not acting, what would you be doing? Where would you be? I'd be acting. I just wouldn't be doing it successfully, I guess, you know, like... <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, you got to do what you love, mm -hmm. you know, you got to do what, like, wakes you up in the morning and gets you out the door, you know, and for me, this, you know, this is that, and, uh, you know, here, here we are. Paul, I hear you're a playwright, and I just kind of want to test out your knowledge here with a trivia question. Okay. You ready? All right. In Arthur Miller's play, Death of a Salesman, who is the protagonist and what is his occupation? His name is Arthur. His name is Arthur Miller. That's the playwright. Oh, his name is <laughs> Willie Loman, and he is a door-to-door -door salesman. That is correct. Do you think that you're going to get that one wrong at all? <laughs> Not typically. Do you have any embarrassing hookup stories? You don't have to use real names. You can, you know, whatever. Shamanda, Tamala, whatever. Yeah. What was that first one? You know, I'm just saying. Shamanda. Yeah, Shamanda. You know, for, for another name. <clears throat> Well, in the sixth grade, <laughs> I was having uh, a kissing contest at a pool party with my then girlfriend, Shamanda Papino. And it was like a who can kiss the longest, but the concept of breathing through your nostrils and not through your mouth, I, I hadn't quite grasped completely. And I had a sinus infection, so while holding this very long kiss, I tried to do that thing where you like, where you blow a little air out the nostril, but instead I blew a big, fat, wet booger on this poor girl's mouth, Shamanda Papino, and um, my friends have still <laughs> not let me live this that down to this day. Shamanda Papino. Shamanda Papino. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry too. <laughs> So Paul, you've seen Potty Mouth, and you're probably familiar with our infamous Potty Mouth challenges. Are you up for it? Always. All right. So our first Potty Mouth <laughs> challenge is called I Say You Say, and it's like our own version of free association. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, some people, famous people, and some random things, and you're going to say the first thing that comes to mind. You ready? Always. <clears throat> Apple. Pear. Shoe. Dog. Musicals. Elaine Stretch. Nappy Dugout. 
What? <laughs> you spit over here. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't seen nothing yet. Happy dugouts. <laughs> Shamanda Pacuna. <laughs> iPod. Ben Folds. RJ Burger. MTV. Sarah Palin. Cunt. Queef. Vagina. Stephen Hawkins. Cunt. China. Ew. ATM. <laughs> <laughs> beef curtains. You. Roast beef curtains. My mom. Judy Garland. Delicious. Harry Potter. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Has anyone told you you look like Harry Potter? Yeah. <laughs> MTV, they don't show RJ's junk. But in your mind, how you can buy, you, it is. you can buy the uh, <laughs> unrated, unrated version. Uh huh. Uh, you can come by my apartment and pick it up. Uh, it's, it's a quality production. <laughs> so you can't just tell us how big it is. No, 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 no. I have to hold out until I'm at a rehab for the second time and need the money from Playgirl. <laughs> What's your call? Fans of your show are probably dying to know what's in store for them for season two, especially because. Hello, you left us, what, end of first season, fucking your best friend to death. So without giving us, giving away too much, yes. can you let us know what's going to go down in RJ's life, something <clears throat> exciting, crazy? Well, um, all I can tell you is that season two starts with a funeral, um, and uh, you'll have to tune in and see the rest March 28th, MTV, Mondays at 10, The Hard Times of RJ Burger season two. This time, we're fucking serious. <laughs> Do you want to see my pooter? What? Were you just picturing me naked? What? An all new season of RJ Burger premieres Thursday, March 24th at 11, right after the finale of Jersey Shore. That's it for our episode of Pima. Thanks for joining us. Remember to stay updated on all things potty by clicking on the subscribe to Pima TV button below. And if you see, want to see more of Paul Iacono and the fun we had shooting, click on any of the buttons on the left. Remember, we're always on Twitter and Facebook at Pima TV. And you can always shoot us an email at TV at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Erica Cho. Keep it dirty. Do a dirty look. Hi there, my name is Paul Iacono from MTV's The Hard Times of RJ Burger, and I have a fucking potty mouth. And a big dick. And this is what I wanted to do all Ask night. To Ask to mouth! Ask to mouth! <laughs> Ask to mouth! <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way.